and welcome to another very interesting Mercedes Dialogue. My name is Frisia and if you have been following our social media, then you know exactly who we are in conversation with today. I have with me Mr. Santosh Ayer. He is the Vice President Sales Hello. and Marketing here at Mercedes Benz and India's first DTM racer, Arjun Maini. We're going to check if we have Arjun on the line with us. A lot of you who have been following Arjun's story, you would know that he is coming in live right now from Germany. There he is. Hi, how are you? All good. <laughs> All right. So it looks like the internet gods are favoring us. Yeah. And we can have this conversation. So I'm not going to waste any time. These are questions, Santosh and Arjun, these are questions that we received from all our different social media handles. So we're talking Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything, LinkedIn. And we had a lot of questions that did come in. We only have a limited amount of time. So we're going to try and answer as many questions as possible within this little time frame that we do have. So the first question that we have, and Santosh, this one is for you. This is from Ruchin. And um, let's see what Ruchin has to say. Could we scroll down, please? So Ruchin has asked that this one is OK. We're going to skip Ruchin's question over here. And can we go on to the next question? This is from Abhinav. This is from Abhinav Mohapatra, who has asked, are the GLC 43 and the A35 the only AMG models that will be locally produced here in India? Will we see more CKD models in Pune considering the addition of the E63 and the E53, making the performance cars more robust? Well, uh, let me say that uh, apart from the GLC 43 and the A35, we also have the GLA 35 AMG. So we have three locally produced AMGs. Hmm. Uh, but when it comes to the 53 and the 63, we call them the purist cars. Uh, you know, the 63 has a one man, one engine concept where, where an engineer actually builds the engine, he puts his signature on this car. And that's, uh, you know, the genetics are from Afaltabag. Okay. And we would like to keep it in Afaltabag. We would like to get the uh, fully imported units from there. So in the future itself, we can confirm that there will be no localization on the 53 and the 63. But we will look out for opportunities below in the 43 and the 35 segments. Well, after all, authenticity is the name of the game. This is what I love about our dialogue sessions. You get to know these little nuances and these little things about Mercedes you wouldn't have known if you weren't a fanatic. <laughs> So our next question has come from Gaurav and uh, Gaurav is saying speed is okay. However, how safe are these new AMGs? I'd like to ask this question to you and then I'd like to throw it to Arjun as well. Well, safety, I think we are best in class. We have seven airbags, uh, including a knee airbag in the, uh, in the AMGs that we have launched today, both the E53 and the E63 AMG. So I think that speaks a lot. Uh, apart from this, I think all the standard safety features like pre-save, some radar assisted features, uh, that's all there in the car. So uh, I think we don't compromise on safety at all and that's also been a hallmark for the brand. So be rest assured. Uh, but of course, uh, the driver also needs to follow the law, the legislation and drive safely. Uh, that's all we would recommend. But these cars are always there for a spin uh, and you can enjoy them uh, with peace of mind. It's act actually very true. I mean, one does get tempted to go a little bit into the speed, but then you slowly do realize that you are in safe hands <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, Arjun, I wanted to ask you if you could answer this one as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, from, from when I drove, uh, safety-wise, it, it felt very under control all the time. So, you know, it was no, at no point that I feel that the car was uh, going to do something that w would be dangerous and so it has really good brakes so if there's an emergency you can stop it really quickly uh, the traction control works fantastic so uh, when you have it on there's really no chance of losing the car on there and even when I was uh, driving at a really high speed uh, you know the, the the driving was quite smooth it was a smooth ride it was not you couldn't feel the craziness and the vibrations that you can usually feel uh, at those speeds so everything was always under control and so it, in my opinion, it, it was uh, great even safety wise. 
And ladies and gentlemen, I have to quickly tell them that Arjun's actually talking from a very first-hand experience. Just yesterday, he drove the E63 on yeah. the Autobahn and we saw a video of that where he did touch 300. And do you want to quickly tell our audience what that also felt like? No, it was great. It was so much power straight away. And uh, yeah, it, it got up to 300 really quickly. So uh, it felt great. And like I said before, it was it was not edgy, so it felt very under controlled. Uh, you could still feel the sensation of the speed, but you very much felt uh, control in control of the car. So this was great. All right, we have another very interesting question, and this one has very specifically come for you, Arjun. And I think you're going to be able to guess who went and asked you this one. Who do you think is faster, you or your brother? <laughs> no guesses. Who asked this question to you? <laughs> Oh, of course it's Kush. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to say me. No, no, no. He's, he's a really quick driver as well. And uh, I hope to race against him someday uh, in a similar series. And yeah, I, I, I'm going to say me just for the sake of it. But no, he's, uh, I think he's every bit as quick as me. And uh, I just hope to race him soon. Now that would be an, interesting, be an interesting race to watch. Race to watch. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Just Look for forward sure. for that in India maybe. <laughs> yes, right here in India. Hopefully Arjun, we get to experience that moment with both the brothers coming and competing. So the next question that has come in, this is from our LinkedIn handle. And this is a question that's come in from Saeed Siraj. And Santosh, he's asking with the blanket cover of the pandemic that is over the current market, how did Mercedes India manage to achieve a 65% sales growth and what's the magic mantra over there? Well, I think uh, these are tough times for sure and I, I think as rightly mentioned by Siraj, yeah, I, these are tough times for all of us. But uh, our belief is strong brands do very well during tough times, you know, and, and uh, that it's also because the love for Mercedes-Benz brand in India is there. We have been in India for 25 years, the consumers love it and to top that, I think what we did is we went ahead with all the product launches. So yeah. we did some close to 10 product launches this year now, this being the, uh, the, the latest two that you see right behind us. Uh, and I think products excite the market, they excite consumers. With the right product, uh, with a fantastic dealer network that we have and always trying to see what we can do in terms of cost of ownership or be it in terms of other solutions. Uh, I think consumers have preferred our brand over whatever uh, options are available. The other big game changer we introduced last year was on the connectivity side. So frankly, all Mercedes-Benz cars are now connected. Uh, you know, the entire MBUX interface uh, that really is uh, again something very unique to us. And uh, also during pandemic, we kept our shop open, not literally because dealerships were closed, yeah. but we kept it open with online sales. So today we have an online platform where a customer can go check out, he can do online consulting, concierge services, and he books a car. So during, uh, on an average now, our online sales is close to 20%. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, which is April and May, the second wave, it went up to 35%. So a lot of customers really use an online platform to communicate with us and also book cars. Yeah. And that actually explains the sales results also for H1. So, and we hope the customers continue to love us and we continue to make new sales records. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we are talking about these two, Beasts or beauty, you know, sometimes I can't make up my mind which one is which and they're this perfect combination of both. Uh, but these are, I'm also simultaneously taking questions that are coming in live. So any of you that have tuned in and there is something that you would like to ask us, if we do like your question, it will come straight to me. So you can keep those questions going in live as well. And since we are talking about the E63 and the E53 over here, this is something that has come in from Akansha Alok. And she is asking, why is, what is the 10-digit difference between them? So basically, the nomenclatures of these cars are based on the power output. So yeah. for example, an E63 uh, delivers close to 612 horsepower. And uh, basically, that's why it gets the 63 nomenclature. And similarly, uh, there is in the region of 450-odd horsepower for the 53. So there is a global standard to name uh, 53s or 63s based on the power output of the engines. Hmm. And that's the reason of these two separate uh, nomenclatures for these cars. All right. And that was a technical one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely know that you can hit those speeds much faster then. <laughs> in simple minds. In simple minds, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, here it looks like we have a question that's coming from a racing aspirant. And this is Rishab who is asking this question to Arjun. Arjun, could you tell us about your journey from karting to single-seater formula racing? And can you also explain the path for an Indian kid who can go on and achieve this kind of dream? And there's a second part to this question as well. I think what he's most interested in is that how can one go about with sponsorships especially so that one can come closer to achieving their dream? Yeah, okay. So um, obviously for me, uh, I started off karting. I got exposed to it very quickly. Um, and uh, I started in the national championship. So if you're somebody from India, I think it's a perfect place to start in the national karting championship. Uh, then, of course, if you're really good and you're performing well, you have to move up the ranks. So you move up to uh, first around Asia and then eventually to Europe. And around when you turn uh, quite young, but around 15 or 16 is the right time to move into Formula cars um, racing or uh, any type of full car racing. And that's what I did. I moved up to the Formula BMW, uh, British Formula 4, uh, stayed after, but I had a close fight with the uh, current F1 driver, George Russell, and I just missed out on the championship to him. Uh, and then, of course, I had race wins in uh, GP3, uh, and I moved up to Formula 2 to the 24 hours of Le Mans. So, so far, uh, and of course now with DTM, with Mercedes AMG. So, I mean, it's been a long career so far, even though I'm still quite young, but um, hard to explain it all in such a short amount of time. But in terms of the question for the sponsorship, uh, I think first you just got to um, get into the karting scene or any racing scene and uh, work on that. And if you feel you're doing good, uh, then of course you have, to, you have to be good in every area in racing. And this is one thing that's very important. You have to be really good on track. Uh, but also uh, very good uh, in your fitness, your mental, your preparation, your understanding of the cars, uh, and of course trying to raise sponsorship, which is not an easy task to do, uh, but it's part of it. So I, I would say first, first and foremost is you have to go and uh, get some local coaching uh, at a karting track and start karting and then uh, do your first race and then you can try to get for sponsorships. Well, I hope that, Rishabh, this can set you on your path to hopefully taking up racing professionally. The next one, Santosh, I have is for you, and this has come from Sonali. And she's asking that what is the top speed of the all-new AMG E53, the 4MATIC, of course, and the E63 that we have got? And if you could tell us about any new features that are included in these 2021 variants. Well, the top speed uh, from a legal, legal perspective, it's of course 240, 260. But you know, with the E63 AMG, we have a speed lim delimiting feature okay. where you can go in excess of 300. Uh, actually, Arjun uh, demonstrated yeah. that in the Autobahn. We have some media friends who tried this car out recently in, on a track and it went beyond 300. So I think uh, it's also you can push this car, yeah. and uh, but we will advise one to be safe while using these cars. If you want to look at 0 to 100, I would say the E53 does that in 4.5 seconds uh, sprint and the E63 does that in 3.4 seconds. So I think that's again quite a benchmark, quite, quite fast and quick when it comes to speed and the thrill as such. Uh, features, uh, it's, there is nothing to compare with the predecessor because E53 is the first time we are launching that car in India. Mm -hmm. uh, and the E63, of course, there was a predecessor car, but uh, there are plenty. Actually, I would just encourage you to go online just now, check uh, many of them. But something that's very, uh, you know, very close to my heart is something called the track pace. So, uh, you can download an AMG track pace app along with the car. You can actually... Uh, monitor all your paces, all, all the runs that you do, all the laps that you do. You can share it with friends on social. And of course, it helps you to better your performance and it also gives you a lot of statistics like what you get out of a V-Box. Right. And that's available on a E63 AMG asset. So that's one highlight you can say apart from many others uh, that we have loaded in this car. I have to tell you that actually if Santosh had to sit and list all the highlights, our one hour would be over and it would be done. So we would best advise you that you go onto the website, it's updated, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can take sure. a look and everything is over there. Yeah. Well, it looks like people can't get enough of the AMG and the next one that I have um, has come in over here for you and what they're saying is there is there any update on the new SL AMG? And the GLE facelift, is there one on the cards? Kind of want the interior of the new S-Class in the GLE. Wow. 
So that's, this one, this guy is already sitting and designing his own Mercedes cars. Yeah, but well, that's a good input. I will definitely Harsh. pass. Harsh. 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 Maybe we pass this on to Gordon <laughs> Wagner, who is our head of design. <laughs> Uh, the GLE facelift, there is nothing on the anvil at least for the next one and a half years. So basically, yeah. uh, please go ahead and buy the current GLE, I can assure you. Yeah. Uh, S-Class of course is a benchmark uh, and whatever comes in the S-Class generally comes in other models over a period of time. So that has been the history and tradition of the, of the car itself. So we will see what features we can surely bring into the GLE whenever we plan the next uh, model facelift. Uh, that comes up. Uh, is there anything else I missed out in answering him? Or no, that, no, uh, pretty much. No. Okay. His designing questions are, yeah, okay. have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, the next one that we have, and I think that this is something that is very important. It's close to my heart, and I know that it's close to everyone here at Mercedes Benz India as well. And this has come from uh, two doctors, and so we have combined both of these over here Dr. Alok Drolia, and uh, on Twitter, as well as Miss is asking that are both of you vaccinated and you could ask if all three of us are vaccinated i'm vaccinated as well uh, and do you want to also tell them about everybody being vaccinated yeah i think personally yes for me i have taken the first shot i think the second one is due next week so yeah. uh, you need the three month gap as such uh, but what we have done is also we have ensured all our colleagues in Mercedes-Benz India, we have 100% vaccinated, not only colleagues, but even our contractual staff that works in the plant, uh, also families. Now, that's the current drive which is happening. Uh, then we extended this also to our dealer network. So, frankly, I'm quite proud to say that 95% of our dealer network is vaccinated uh, and that's around 4,500 odd people, be it sales, be it service consumer facing, non-consumer facing staff. Yeah. So that's priority number one and I'm happy somebody asked such question. Yeah. Arjun, I know that you've been away from the country for a while, but uh, have you managed to get vaccinated in Germany? No, I haven't yet. And I think, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been difficult to do that here, uh, but we're taking all precautions. I get my COVID tests done, I think two or three times a week. I've lost count on how many I get. So uh, yeah, we take all precautions and I'm following all the uh, regulations and all the rules and I'll, I'm making sure I'm safe and healthy so far, I've not had an issue, uh, but of course it would be great to get vaccinated. Yes, but I can obviously understand you are in another country right now, so I'm sure that it's not a very easy and simple thing for one to do, but we're glad to know that you are safe. <laughs> <laughs> the next question that I have Arjun is actually for you. And Arjun is asking that, uh, Kash, sorry, Kashish is asking, which race are you most looking forward to in the DTM season? Oh, I, I was really looking forward to the Norris Ring, which has been postponed now for now because I, I think uh, for COVID regulations because they can't have fans. So um, I think apart from this, I'm looking forward to the next one next week in Laos's Ring because we're going to use. Uh, half the track is going to be an oval layout, so it's going to be a half NASCAR style race and then a half full street circuit race. So I think this is interesting. I don't, I don't think it's been done like this uh, before. So this, this should be quite an interesting thing. So uh, I think if you want to have a look to check out the Laos Spring race next weekend, uh, I think it's going to be a new thing for everyone and I think it's going to be really exciting. All right. So if All you want to catch the next race, it's up very, very soon, everyone, and you can watch him on that one. We're going to go and switch on to some live questions that have been coming in over here as well. And this one is for you, Santosh, where Sean is asking, are there any plans for a production V12 AMG in the future? I think I already answered Answer that 63 one. and the 53 won't come as Correct. such. Yeah. We can even move on the, on the prompter over here because this one has been answered yeah. as well. And we've got another one that has come in. Uh, yeah, I think we've also covered about how you have coped with the demand and supply because of COVID as well. Yeah. Let's see, we have another question over here that has come in for Arjun. And I think this is something, the question is from a handle called keep calm and carry on. <laughs> What's the fastest that you have ever driven one of your cars and where was it? Well, on, on, the, on the road, the fastest I've driven was the E63S yesterday. Uh, so uh, <laughs> when we hit 300. So that's the fastest I've been on the road. Obviously on the track, it's a different case. You know, uh, you, I reached 335 at Le Mans. Uh, but yeah, yesterday was the fastest I've been on the road, which was cool. And I think 
there was room for more in the car if I had not reached the traffic. So, <laughs> yeah, this was cool. Well, hopefully, maybe some at some point our viewers might also get to see that video of him touching those speeds over yeah. there. Yeah. Well, the next one that we have is from Ali. And Ali is asking, I will wait till you guys put the F1 power unit in the AMG. Are you planning to do that soon? Because I want to feel like Hamilton. Yes, uh, I think there is a project back in Germany. It's called the AMG One, Project okay. One, where they are putting an F1. Uh, you know, they are contemplating or they are they are looking into it. Uh, at least that's what. So maybe if something comes up, we will reach out to Ali <laughs> and let him know that it's done sure. and ready for you to race. Let's see. This is coming, and it's from Shreyank. Shreyank is asking, what's one major difference in consumer habits observed by luxury car owners in India versus the rest of the world? That's actually kind of interesting. Is there a difference? I think more or less the consumers are very mature across India or worldwide for these cars. But one yeah. big difference I can say is the Indian consumers are much more demanding okay. from the brand. And I think it's obvious because con due to the taxation, the cars are very expensive in India. Yeah. And uh, for, from that perspective, they also demand the best from the brand. So they are demanding, they, they are not as forgiving, you can say, compared to some of the European uh, counterparts or maybe the other parts of the world. But uh, and, and what we try and do is we try and be accessible, you know, in terms of social media or even the entire top management team, the leadership team, uh, uh, all of us are accessible to customers if they need support. Mm. Because frankly, these are cars and it can go wrong. I, 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 it should be naive for me to say that, you know, all our cars, spotless, seamless, nothing goes wrong. Yeah. There can be, these are engineering goods and sometimes there are issues. But how do we solve them? How do we come back to that? I think that's where lies uh, you know the the key thing so uh, to take care of customers i think you need to be much more involved in india because i have not seen my counterparts in other markets being so involved on some of these topics so that's there it's quite demanding market but we love that it's fine <laughs> yeah well i think a lot of us also we treat our cars like our babies and you know we get so involved in, and yeah. we get so emotionally involved with them and in India everything is all about a one-on-one -on -one relationship that's true that's true you know I don't want to talk to a computer I want to talk, talk to a to human somebody, being yeah. and Mercedes always makes sure that they have someone <laughs> on call waiting for you <laughs> well we've got a question for Arjun over here and this has come from Krish this is something I believe a lot of enthusiasts would like to know from Arjun how is DTM different from open wheelers? So the DTM cars are GT3 cars, which are based on road cars. So uh, I think this is this is cool for people that are fans of cars and uh, have a passion for cars because you can watch your favorite brands, you know, battle it out uh, on track. Single seater championships apart from F1 are usually all made by the same manufacturer. Uh, they're heavily reliant on downforce uh, for their grip, uh, which makes them really fast, but uh, very difficult to race with sometimes. Whereas uh, in GT3, obviously the racing is really close, uh, really aggressive, and uh, a lot of fans like that because you see a lot of uh, natural racing like you used to do back in the golden age in the 80s and 90s. Uh, so uh, I guess those are the main differences. In the end, you know, the racing is all the same. Uh, you need to go the fastest, and of course you need to be, have the best race craft to win. Uh, but I would say that's the major difference. There's another question that has come in for you and this one is from the Menin and he's asking how do we make motorsport more accessible in India? Um, I, this, is a, this is a tough one because I think um, it is getting bigger by the day, uh, Formula 1 especially, uh, but I think with with myself in, in DTM, uh, with the other drivers, uh, Jehan and stuff, doing the other stuff in Formula 2, I think it is getting more and more accessible, you know. Uh, there was a time where we couldn't watch any DTM races or, uh, you know, Le Mans races or whatever from India. And now it's so accessible on YouTube and stuff like this. And I think what the Indian people want is uh, somebody to follow, uh, you know, to have someone to look up to that can raise the flag for the country, you know, and that's what we saw in uh, when we had Narain Karthik in, in Formula One, you know, a lot of interest built in Formula One when that happened. And I think that's what India needs is uh, somebody 
from the country uh, winning in a top class of racing and that's when the interest comes from uh, of course our dtm races are live on youtube for everyone in in, in india so you can catch them uh, free of cost so i think everyone's doing their best to make it more accessible and make more sport a lot bigger in the country well, because well, you mentioned Formula One, I'm going to quickly ask you this one question that has come in, which is from Anirudh. And Anirudh is saying, is Arjun Maini again going to F1? <laughs> I'm, I'm, at a, I'm at a different stage of my career now. I'm enjoying what I'm doing in DTM uh, with Mercedes AMG. And for now, that's what I'm focused on. You know, I'm... Uh, uh, for me, it's been very special so far this year, and I'm not thinking about anything else for now. Of course, if an opportunity comes in the future, that's a different thing. Uh, but for now, I'm, I'm very happy where I am. Our next question has come for you, and I'd love to know this answer as well, because this is a color that I'm so fond of. And it looks like a lot of our customers are into personalizing their cars as well. <laughs> So this one has come from Neha and uh, Neha is asking it would be absolutely delightful to see one of the AMGs in the lemon yellow. Is that a possibility? Well, uh, it's not lemon yellow, we call it sun yellow. It's available in the A35 AMG mm -hmm. that uh, we have right now. Uh, of course, you have to pay 6 lakhs a bit more right. for that. It's on a premium, but yes, it's possible and we can paint it and give it to the customer. Uh, then, of course, in the future, we take this and very soon you will not be disappointed with some yellow cars, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, because they look so great on the road as well. Striking. They're yeah. very striking, absolutely. So, here's another question that has uh, come in. How can the recent B-School MBA 21 grad in marketing pave their way into the luxury auto giants like Mercedes-Benz India? Well, I think that's a that's good question, valid question for youngsters passing out of colleges. Yeah. I would say, uh, you know, it's the destination if you are fixated, like it's, I have to be in luxury automotive market, hmm. uh, it becomes a bit more complicated. If uh, I think the starting point has to be to have a wider search, which is to start with automotive as an industry. Okay. And then uh, as you want to be there and be in marketing or be it in a leadership position, I think one needs to first start uh, doing the basics right maybe work at some of the franchisees, some of our partners, maybe then go along and then at the right time we have job openings coming up. In fact, we just did a recruitment drive of at least close to 15 to 18 odd people yeah. uh, in the last month's time. So at the right time, please apply. Uh, we also have management training positions. So basically we hire from top institutes, our HR does the hiring in a year and uh, maybe that's another way to get directly into Mercedes-Benz. So yeah. uh, maybe it helps uh, keep a close watch on our careers page. In, uh, in our Mercedes-Benz website and we keep uh, announcing openings and stuff there. But uh, don't sit idle, I think uh, the, what's important is do something, get into the industry hmm. and uh, maybe keep trying and maybe at the right time with the right experience and if the opening comes up, one can definitely join the brand. Well Deepak, I hope that that answers your question. <laughs> it's the careers page on the Mercedes-Benz India page. Go check that out and yeah. you would know when the opportunities are opening up. Arjun, this question is for you and this is uh, specifically come in asking about your motorsport journey but I feel like you've kind of touched upon that. Is there something you want to add on that? No, I, think, I think what I said before, it's, 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 yeah. it's been yeah. a good journey so far long so there's nothing really to add on that. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> okay, we've got, uh, I'll take one live question right now. All right, we have something for both of you. In this era of EVs, digitalization and sustainability, how confident does the future of performance and sports cars like the AMG look like? Wow, uh, I think uh, whoever asked this question is looking into the future and it's quite valid. First of all, um, sustainability is core to what we are doing. So yeah. in fact, by end of this year, all the production plants in the world will be 100% powered by green energy. And that not only includes Mercedes-Benz India, but globally. So that's a big statement. Now, apart from this, uh, when you talk about cars, we also talk about recyclability. So uh, here again, we are close to 85% recyclability with these cars. Target is to reach 100. Mm. Uh, so there is a lot of work happening on how can we recycle. And then last not the least is the tailpipe emissions, which is to do with uh, what, uh, you know, what comes out of the tailpipe. 
there uh, i think we have made lot of leaps and bounds of course evs would be the future but uh, i think amg has its own plans also in this space i cannot divulge all the details but frankly we have been pioneering the auto industry we invented the car and all i can say is we will invent it again so uh, that's that's a continuous future uh, process and we are fully committed to having a sustainable organization in fact our target picture is by 2039 we will be 100% sustainable in in the overall ecosystem it's not only about tailpipe emissions but the overall when i say recyclability uh, also uh, using all sustainable resources be it at the supplier end at our end yeah. so that's already a uh, clear statement of intent from daimler sustainability is one of the big things that i feel like everybody is talking about and it definitely is the future sure. for all of us so here is somebody again who's looking into the future as you like to call it i it's really it all the questions of course are about the amg and you can truly see that people can't get enough <laughs> of them when is the s63 coming out wow um right now to we india, cannot of yeah, yeah right now we cannot share any future okay. product launches but i think if you have been following us we make we go all out to get the latest cars as soon as possible so the moment there are unveils worldwide we will try and get it as soon as possible all right can we move on to the next question that i have on the prompter in front of me thank you so arjun uh, this one is for you and garima wants to know have you well actually this has been answered as well she wanted to know whether you had driven the e53 or the e63 and yes you have and that was an absolutely delightful experience for you so arjun we have one that has come we all heard the, your heartbreaking formula 3 team radio what was the motivation behind you to get up to this spot and will we see you in f1 you don't need to answer the second part you've answered that yeah i was um... you know when you when you're in sport emotions run high as everyone knows and there were situations that weren't favoring me at that point and so uh that's when when this kicked off uh but eventually it worked you know they did the engine changes and everything that needed to to put me back on track and uh, the next weekend already I was straight away competitive again so uh <laughs> in the end it worked but uh yeah of course it, it's it's racing it's sports and emotions run high as always and uh, that's why sometimes these things happen maybe i have one question for arjun please arjun which motor sports driver do you look up to what's your who's your idol or who whom do you follow ah this is tough because i <laughs> uh, i grew up watching mika hakkinen and michael schumacher race and i think those two were 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 heroes for me so uh, of course i didn't say i used to start to watch because you're an enthusiast So I guess yes uh, Mika Michael and Ethan Senna uh, are my heroes. Nice. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> Thank. <laughs> well Arjun it also looks like a lot of your fans who are in Germany are asking how can they meet you. It looks like you need to do like a greet and meet when you are over there. Yeah hopefully well uh, it would be great if uh, some guys can come over to to the race weekends you know and uh if it opens up and there's pit walks and stuff i would say that would be the the easiest time to do it but uh yeah so i i guess <laughs> if you can make it to the races i i think lausitzring is uh, allowing a set number of fans i think 10000 fans are allowed so if you are in germany you can uh, come and catch the race next weekend well the most well, obvious place that you could catch him is where you would catch him go to a race and you definitely will get to see him over there and Let's see we have a lot of questions that have come in. So it looks like a lot of people also do want to watch the video that we have been talking about where he finally reaches when he okay. reaches uh the 300, 300? kilometers. Okay. So I'm just going to let all our viewers know that we will play that. We'll play it very soon. It's going to happen towards the end. So if that is something that you do want to watch just make sure that you stay till the end of this live because we will play that okay, video. Okay, that will be nice. Yeah. Yes, we will play that video for you. Arjun, I have another question that has come in and this is somebody who's asking that what's your favorite feature on the E63? Um I think the track pace is really cool because 
I mean, you can just select the track that you want and it's, it's like an engineer, you know? So you got your sector times, you got your lap times and you can even put your live telemetry so you can see what you're doing with your throttle and your brakes and all the analysis uh, by yourself. And this was this was really cool. You know, I, I kept it on my telemetry page most of the time when I had the car because uh, this was really interesting. So there's so many features, you know, the 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 rotary switch, which allows you to go from a race mode to a comfort. Uh, the launch control starts are really cool. So I, I think I, we wouldn't have enough time if I have to say uh, all the features that I like. But for sure, my my favorite is the, the track base. Well, uh, Santosh, I have the next question for you coming from Veer. And he's asking that how do you maintain to stand at that first position in luxury cars all over the world? Well, I think the credit first goes to customers who love us, actually, because they, the brand has so much of heritage and history. Uh, and I think we have done a lot of, uh, lot of it to preserve that history and heritage also. Uh, and then secondly, I think our engineers back in Stuttgart, I think Gordon Wagner for his design and styling and our engineers who really come up. You know, the S-Class is a fine example. When I saw the earlier generation S-Class, which is referred as a V222, uh, I always felt this is the pinnacle. I think this is the best car in the world and now we have done it. And now when we saw the V223, which is a new S-Class, uh, it's a completely different level. In fact, being in the automotive industry, we can't imagine how the car can reinvent itself in this format. So I think a lot of credit goes uh, to these engineers, to these uh, innovation, uh, to all those R&D guys who come up with these fantastic cars uh, and their machines. So uh, I think that's what makes us number one. And as I said earlier, we invented the car, we continue to do so, and we will do it again. So what we will do is always, uh, as a brand and as a team, uh, try to give the best customer experience, be it in terms of products, sales, marketing, and uh, try to be there. And of course, we have you as customers who love us, and that's what makes us number one. So I have the last question, and this is actually for both of you that I would like to ask. And this is something that I also keep getting asked a lot, and people always want to know from people who are in high-stress, high-pressure situations. What do you do to stay calm? Arjun or me first? I'll take both of you because, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's stresses, uh, life stresses are there for everyone. And you have different kinds of stresses and Arjun has different kinds of stresses. And then we, that's why we have different mechanisms and ways of handling them. So, you know, I, I have this question from some of my colleagues or uh, some people whom I know and I say yeah. my name is Santosh. Yeah. So you know that way in, in, in the Hindi context it means happiness. So yeah. sometimes uh, tend to be cool. It's not easy always. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there are various forms. To, uh, first of all, I love what I do. I love work in that sense. So uh, for me, work is not stress. I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and if there is a situation which comes up, uh, of course, you have to handle it. Uh, but when I go back home, my kids are the biggest de-stressing elements. I have twin boys and beautiful daughter and then uh, I think I, I am in my zone with them and that takes away everything uh, back uh, and I'm back in the nirvana zone, you can say. <laughs> it must be so difficult though to put that phone on silent mode or do you just say, no, this is it, this is my family time and these couple of hours are for them. Never happens, frankly, <laughs> though my kids love it and they love and hate me for this phone being around me. Uh, but yes, uh, I think we still find time to balance it out. Yeah. Uh, but if it's something it's important, it needs to be done. As I said, I love work. So it's not that it's a stress for me, the phone is around. But yeah. of course, family doesn't love it as much. As but much as I you need love to find it. a bit better way to keep yeah. the phone more uh, at a distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arjun, uh, this question is for you as well. I mean, we all know what that moment must... I mean, we don't know what that moment must be like just before a race where you're kind of mentally preparing yourself. So what do you do to not be so stressed out? Do we have Arjun on the feed? Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the main thing you can do is uh, understand what is in your control and not worry about things that is not under your control. And I think that's a big mistake, uh, which I used to make a lot, of course, and I think a lot of people do make, is uh, worry too much about things they, they, they have no control over. And so I would say, you know, um, the, the, you can overthink things a lot. And I think it's better to keep it simple, keep it calm, uh, just focus on the process, stay in the moment, stop worrying about the future. And I think that's how 
that's how I deal with my stress. Everyone has to find their own way because I think no two people are the same. Uh, but yeah, that's how I do it and it's been working for me. Do you meditate? Do you take those few moments just before you get into that car? Like what is that process like for you? Well, I'm, I'm quite different. I've, I've, I've gone over the years, I've tried all kinds of different things. And um, for me personally, I realized I, I, I perform best when I just don't worry about anything else and go in the car. So I don't really have a crazy pre, uh, pre performance routine or, or something. Of course, you need to do a little bit of warm up here and there. But um, I just walk into my car, jump into the seat, get strapped in and I'm, I'm ready to go racing. So basically no pre race rituals over here. No, no, not, nothing crazy. <laughs> Just the usual warm-up, body warm-up. And then send it as soon as you yeah, get in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people have been messaging and saying that they do want to watch the video. And this is that yes. moment, ladies and gentlemen. So yesterday, we had Arjun getting into the E53. 63. Into the E63. And now, you can take a look and see what that moment and that experience was like. Hey guys, really exciting day here today as I get to test drive the all new Mercedes AMG E63S 4MATIC Plus car. Uh, in the background over there you can also see my Mercedes AMG GT3 DTM car and straight away you can see the similarities between the front end, the aggressive sporty look that both cars have and uh, I think this is really cool. Okay, so here we are in the driver's seat in the cockpit of the car and one of the things I look forward to most when getting into a new car is the steering wheel. And as you can see, it's a wonderful work of art here. Really good grip on the wheel, which is, you know, perfect for a track day experience or even a relaxed Sunday lazy drive. But the really cool thing about this car is these rotaries here, which adjust uh, the mode you want to be in. So you got your race mode, your sport plus, your sport, comfort, individual and slippery. So, you know, whatever you feel like doing that day, you got, you got different modes and uh, different helps from the car to help you enjoy the day uh, you need to the most. You've also got more settings uh, here which you can control like the traction control to put off, your exhausts, automatic stop start, your AMG dynamic settings as well and your suspension. So everything in this car is uh, easily adjustable uh, according to what you need and when you need it and all can be done on the go while driving which is really cool. All right, so now let's crack the bonnet open and take a look at uh, the heart of the beast. Okay, so here we have it. 4 liter V8 bi-turbo engine, 612 horsepower to play with, with a 0 to 100 in 3.4 seconds. Okay, let's have a ride in the beast. The really cool thing uh, about this car is you can also adjust the controls on the side of the seats here to make it more narrow and also uh, by your leg over here. So this is really helpful on a track day, for example, when you want to take the car for a little spin uh, to have some more cushioning uh, on the sides. And of course, if you want to relax, you can let it open and you got some breathing space. So this was a really cool feature. Straight away, straight away it feels really, really good. Very good feedback from the steering wheel. It's very direct, a lot like in the race car, actually. Okay, so I'm raring to check out the power in this thing. So let's say we take it to the German Autobahn now and see what we can do. Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Take me to the A1. All right. Okay, so we've made our way into the A1 Autobahn without speed limits. And so we're going to change now to sport mode for race mode, actually, for maximum performance. And we're going to put it into manual so I can control the gear shifts. Alrighty, so let's see what we got here. Oh my God, a lot of power. We are at 250 kilometers an hour already, 260 now, 270, 280, 7 to 90. Can we hit 300 before we reach? 300. <laughs> All right, so another cool feature with the car is uh, when you're cruising in comfort mode, you get cylinder deactivation, which means the engine runs on four cylinders instead of eight. And this really helped with uh, fuel consumption. So you can save a lot of fuel by, by this feature. And again, it proves in a way 
how it's an ideal car for both sports and for luxury driving and also can be very uh, good on your consumption as well. Well, there you have it, folks. That moment where Arjun hits those speeds and you can see that he's thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying them. Arjun, how was that moment for you? No, it was, it was really enjoyable because it's, it's one thing doing it on a track and then it's another thing doing it uh, uh, on a road. Of course, it's allowed in the German autobahns to not have speed limits, so the, that's the only time you should try to do it. Uh, but yeah, it was it was unbelievable, and I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting it to perform the way it did. You know, you could you could see from the moment I hit the power, the delivery in the video, the the speeds rise up so quickly, even at from 150. Uh, so yeah, it was really cool moment for me, and I really enjoyed it. Well, Santosh and I were just talking. We can't wait for all the circuits and the tracks in India also to open up so that we can take these babies for a good spin and feel, realize and feel and experience what it does feel like. Cool. Well, Arjun, thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of everyone over here and the team, especially from Mercedes-Benz India, we wish you all the best for all your upcoming races. And we can't wait for you to come back to the motherland and maybe do this live one day right over here. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. And if you Thank would you. like to say something to all your fans that have tuned in right now. No, thank you. Um, like I said, it's great, great car that I drove yesterday. Uh, I'm very happy to be a part of the Mercedes AMG family. And uh, please do catch my race at the Lausitz Ring next weekend for Mercedes AMG Team Get Speed. And if you are in Germany by any chance, uh, come and watch it on track because there are spectators allowed. All right. Thank you. And stay safe. Bye-bye. Well, Santosh, also a passing note and a goodbye from you to everyone that has tuned in. Well, I think it's been a great, uh, I think the questions were nice. We can, I can just get a sense that there are a lot of fans, a lot of questions. We try to reach them out as much as possible. Yes. But uh, yes, before we end, again, we'll just request all to follow COVID appropriate behavior. I think the pandemic is still around us. Uh, these cars, we should not miss the point. Uh, admits all the product launches that we need to be safe. Yeah. Uh, that's a starting point. And yeah. so please take care, stay safe. We promise from our side to bring you the best customer experiences. So thanks also for you. I think it was nice uh, for the session in, uh, and to Thank interact. you. Thank you so much for having me. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frisia. And like Santosh did say, please stay safe. And be careful, and if you haven't been vaccinated, please do go and get yourselves vaccinated so that we can all live healthy lives once again. Thank you, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.